shock the system. Welcome to Dank Discussions with your host, Calican CEO Maynard Breslow. In each episode, you'll learn from the trailblazers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and influencers in the ever moving, ever growing cannabis industry. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Dank Discussion. Today, we're joined by Precious Osage Arese. Precious, hey. Is this, hey, how's it going? I'm Precious doing well. The, uh, so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you. You know, you're the uh, COO of uh, Roll Up Life, Inc. And uh, really excited. We're going to be talking about a lot of fun stuff. And we're talking about, obviously, what you guys are doing. Talking about uh, cannabis delivery, social equity, uh, you know, and legalization in your area and all that fun stuff. But I guess we got to know where your area is, right? So let our listeners know where you're based out of today. Especially legalized New Jersey. Most, one of the most exciting states right now when it comes to legalization. You can just feel the energy around here in the cannabis industry. Um, New Jersey is just really prime, I say, where we're in a position where a lot of our demand obliterates our supply. So there's a lot of room for people to come in here and get into the industry and really find a way to make um, the market work here. So super exciting, super exciting. For sure. No, definitely. Was, we were talking about it before we uh, got on the air here, you know, that uh, we're just in New Jersey. You're obviously there all the time, right? We, uh, yeah. My wife's family is uh, based out of New Jersey, so we go there a few times a year. And um, we could definitely feel it, you know? We could definitely mm-hmm. feel, like you were saying, the energy, you know? And uh, obviously, since uh, passing legalization, it was, even, it was even bigger, right? It was a lot of excitement. You know, talk to me a little bit about, about the energy, right? What, how you feel that kind of optimism or kind of trepidation or anything like that, you know, because uh, it is like, you know, we always have our fingers crossed, right? That uh, right. things are going to go the right way. And, uh, and, but we never really know until it's done in practice. Right. Okay. So talk to me like uh, kind of your vision or what, what you guys are uh, expecting here. Um, yeah. So that's actually a really great um, question because when I say energy, you can just feel the sharks in the water as mm. well. So the major multi-state operator <laughs> players, they're like surrounding Jersey right now, all ready yeah. to get their, their finger in the pot. But then there is that opportunity for minority owners, such as myself, minority entrepreneurs in the cannabis space. Sure. So we sure. start to like, you know, take up some ownership. We know there's not a lot of us here. I was um, raised in New Jersey my whole life, been here for over 20 plus years. So I, this, is, this is my land. I understand it. I um, understand how the war on drugs has really impacted people in my community specifically. So this is one of those ways of starting to reverse that trend. So you just feel that energy in terms of like setting things right here in New Jersey on that um, social equity front. And yes, the, the bill has been voted on and it's expected to be signed by the governor in the next coming days. And, you know, January 1st, recreational um, marijuana will be the law of the land. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done on the advocate front, you know, that's the energy that you still see there. There's still a lot of work to be done to make sure that applicants like myself who are seeking licensing really do have a shot and not just the shot where they tell you like, oh, there's this or that within the bill, but no, an actual shot Uh at licensing and New Jersey really being, you know, that first state to really bring what real social equity, real social justice is in this area because we know New Jersey transitioned. It won't be far too long before we see New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and some of these other states join along. So setting that blueprint and foundation right now in New Jersey is super important. So it's all like TBD. We have to see what the commission does in the next couple um, weeks in terms of setting up policies. We have to see what applications will look like, you know. So that's just the anticipation right there that has everybody kind of like in a frenzy. But again, lots of work to be done, but we're just happy that we crossed the hump into from medicinal to recreational for sure because of that social justice piece. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's funny, right? Because I wanted to hear, uh, you know, kind of your background and everything. I want to get that into that as well. But, you know, bring this up right off the bat, right? The aspect of social equity. And one of the things you said was hearing, having those sharks in the water, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that that's one of the, the scary things that we see, right? You know, it's uh, I, like, I've, you know, I'm from, I'm from LA, I'm from Cali. And that yeah. we see, you know, the kind of guidance that this, you know, social equity applicants have to have, you know, because of, uh, you know, for better, or for worse, these people are good at what they do in their predatory ways. Right. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times it's a matter of like, listen, you know, it's a one thing to like have a seat at the table. It's another thing to, 
you know, let me eat with you. It's another thing to like, give me my voice and let me run my company and let me do the way that I want to do with my vision, right? Not right. just, okay, cool. I'm going to be like a front man for your company. You know what I mean? And like, right. you know, right. now you're just, you know, funding me and everything like that. But like, um, you know, being able to, to be able to have that and also maintain that. Right. So, right. Um, you know, that's, that's something that we've seen, right. Where it's, uh, it's, it's been a little bit difficult. Um, yeah. in that regard, just in practice. So, you know, how, how do you, um, what's the kind of preparation that you're taking, right? In order to kind of protect yourself from those predatory, you know, sharks that are coming in right away. They see, oh, hell yeah, New Jersey pass, boom. Well, we got money yeah. and, you know, they're, yeah. oh, they're coming with open checkbooks, right? But they're also coming with uh, lawyers and all kinds of fun stuff and, uh, you know, uh, what yeah. do you call it? fine print and everything else, you know, so. Uh, we, we're, we're definitely, so one thing about Roll Up Life, what we pride ourselves on is that a lot of people think legalization, when it happened on the 12th, I mean on the 3rd, that Roll Up Life just appeared. Uh -huh. We've been um, building this company for about four years now. So we put ourselves in a position to really um, take a foothold, to have a stronghold over that delivery market in New Jersey. So I would say the best way that we're doing to um, Spend, you know, away a lot of these um, major players from consuming us is because we've built a business. We built a, a credible business with a good model that can it, that can compete with any of the major players. We plan on being major multi-state operators as well. So I don't always see them um, as like a something scary thing. I see them as a goal to, to get to, you know, how did they get there? How can a company like mine get there? And it's from building, it's from the foundation, it's from the ground, it's from the research. So over the last four years, we've been doing the same thing. We've been getting our lawyers. We've been getting our accountants. We've been getting our delivery methods, our technology, you know, um, getting our lobbying together so we can get ready for the application process so that we are competitors, so that social equity won't be the only reason why we got our license. That's just the tip of that. That's just the extra, you know, icing on the cake. Yes, I'm African-American. Yes, I'm a woman. Yes, I live in an impact zone, which is a place that's been um, affected by marijuana arrest. Yes, I have 51% ownership, and yes, I qualify for the 30% of licenses, which are going to be allocated to minorities. That all of that is well and good, but that's not what's going to drive me to completely win my license, my business model, what we plan on doing for the community, how we plan on adding to that two billion dollar number that the state expects to see in the next two years is how I think I'm going to be able to, you know, um, protect and grow my business and show that I'm applying for a license just as everyone else is because I have that foundational structure. I have the, the market, I have the brand and I have the funding to, to play this cannabis game. So <laughs> I would say to, um, that's the most important thing, just having a solid business and that, that'll take you far from the beginning. And then you'll roll in the social equity part and, um, you know, should piece together that I don't want to roll in and just try to win a social equity license. I just want to win a license based on the merit of the business that we're building. 100%. I mean, I think that's amazing viewpoint right there, you know, and, you know, you mentioned something there, you know, these powerful worlds, right, words, right, impact, you know, and, and obviously mentioning, you know, African American, you know, woman, all these kind of things in and of themselves, right, have, have a lot of merit, a lot of, a lot of weight, right. So tell me, what does that, you know, mean to you to be able to kind of um, be leading the way, right, right here at the beginning, you know, and in, in that kind of way, um, is it something that you put a lot of credence on? You know, or is it something that just like, um, you know, I want to be treated just like anybody else. Like why, like you said, right on its own merit, right? You yeah. know, and, uh, and, you know, a little bit of both or, or talk to me about that, the importance that you, that you have with that. No, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of both business wise. Um, I want my business and, and the merit of my business to um, be what people see first and, um, and foremost, especially in the industry. But in terms of just being a black woman in the industry, I want that to be seen first too because there's not too many of us here in the space. Um, I think last I read about 4.3% of applic applicant holders in the country, um, in the cannabis industry are, are black people. Yeah. That is not an okay number, yeah. you know? And that's, I think that's what sometimes really, you know, keeps a lot of people of color a little hesitant when you come into this industry, because you look at those figures and you say, well, why is that so low? Like how can little old me impact that sort of number? You know, how can little old me really start to get into an industry that's making people billionaires, but yet I see people who look like me in jail. Yeah. So um, it's definitely a lot of ownership on that part when, um, you know, I want to be able to lead the way for more people of color to really enter this space. I want to start to break down those barriers in this, in this industry and let people know, 
yes, it's, it's a fight. It's definitely not the easiest, but it's doable. It's extremely doable. And um, when you do it, you start to realize, oh, I can help more people do it. So being um, coming into this industry, how I did, I know I'll talk to you a little bit about that. I mentioned earlier, it's like an unorthodox kind of story, which I'm sure most industry people have. Um, I'm very, I take a lot of pride in just, you know, what we're doing here with Roll Up Life and how we plan on really disrupting the industry, um, starting with New Jersey and then really starting to set that trend going on. So, you know, being a black woman in this industry is also a powerful thing, you yeah. know, because there isn't that many of us. So that's when you, that's when a lot of the, the groundwork starts and you start to connect with people, you start to build and you realize what you're doing can really impact you know generations going down and that's what really drives me um especially to keep going oh definitely you know you know talking with you know we're minority owned you know talking with uh with some of my buddies as well you know and talking about the importance of having substance over symbolism right and a lot of things that we talk about in terms of social justice is nice but a lot of it is symbolism right and like right here we're talking about black owned company like this is really you know, substance. This is really what what we need more of. Like you said, four percent. It's ridiculous, especially talking about the war on drugs and how that's, you know, specifically targeted. Uh, you know, uh, blacks yeah. and minorities at, at a whole. You know, and and it's just like been a uh, you know the, that was a way of making money. Right now, once yeah. again, it's like a way of making money. Right, you know, of uh, being able to profit um, off the black community. You know, so um, it's it's. Uh, you know, I love, yeah. I love being and I'm grateful to have, to have this connection with you as well, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I can say ever since I got into the cameras in the industry, I just love it. Like, I love everything about it in terms of, like, I always equate it to, like, early tech social media days. Like, yeah, yeah. People, I tell people, you understand, cannabis right now is literally like where MySpace was. We're on now phone. look at what we have. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have all these new, we have LinkedIn. We're not even at those kind of stages yet. So imagine really coming into this industry now and seeing what it looks like five, 10 years from now. Like that's the most exciting part about it as well is entering something while it's young, New Jersey, while it's fresh, nothing's happened yet and so, um, on the recreational side. So just getting ready for that, being among the first to really start to dictate how this market moves. It's crazy, it's exciting. No, it's, it's, that's like one of the things that I find exciting too, right? Like you were saying, that's a great analogy, right? Like myspace and sometimes it took a couple iterations to figure out they didn't even know if there was even use for it right they didn't even know yeah. if there was even use for myspace do people even want it right is this something how are you going to monetize from it right and obviously you know we're making mistakes state by state and we're trying to be better and have better iterations right you know but mm-hmm. you mentioned a couple of times right you know how exciting it is but also you know based on how you came into the industry so i'm so interested i was this is my favorite thing, you know, being able to connect with people and hear their stories. And, uh, you know, tell me yeah. about your the or- unorthodox way that you came into the, into the <laughs> industry and talk to me about your background in cannabis and, and what brought you to this place right here with Roll of Life. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's actually an interesting story. So um, prior to being in the cannabis industry, I was a practicing journalist. Um, I worked at places such as like CNN and Hearst Television in D.C., really political um, producing TV news. That's also like an adrenaline rush kind of um, industry. So you can, I guess, say I have a type. <laughs> you, yeah, so, you're like uh, high, definitely high energy, right? High, right, uh, high right. stress. Like, I can't just know. be at a desk all day. Yeah. <laughs> so I had, I then transitioned and moved back to New Jersey a couple years ago where I was going to go to grad school where I'm currently am at right now at Columbia University um, Journalism School. So still, you know, practicing journalism. And I had a friend of mine who's the CEO of Roll Up, Roll Up Life, Tyon Bryant. Um, childhood friend, we've known each other our whole lives. He lives literally walking distance from me. Um, he was, you know, he had dreams of going to the NFL and he was doing a whole bunch of things that way. But we, we connected in New Jersey and he told me, um, he first called me maybe about three years ago. And he said, Precious, I have this idea about a um, delivery service for cannabis. Like, I need you to help me. And I was like, no, thank you. No, I hung up. (laughs) I was like, Tayan, you understand my life right now. It's so busy. I just got into J school. I need to like focus. I'm like in a career state change, whatever. I'm sorry, wrong person. Can't help you. I know nothing about the cannabis industry. I smoke weed for fun. Bye. (laughs) So literally a year later, 
he went and did all this stuff. He went to expos, he went and networked, he went and pitched at different competitions. He just did a whole bunch of stuff. It comes back to me a year later and he like pitches to me. He's like, Precious, okay, now I really need your help. I know before when I asked you, I had nothing to show you, but now I really need your help because he knew I can help with like marketing and branding at that time. He wanted to start to build some, some imagery to a lot of the work he's done. So I said, okay, show me what you got. You've been bothering me. It's like a whole year later. Show me what you got. And he literally blows my mind away with like this full on pitch deck explainer roll up life and what it will do, you know, really predicting 2020 at the time. It was around like 2018. He was predicting legalization and where the trend was going. He had met certain people. He met cultivators. He met just a, a group of people who's really enabled him to kind of start to get more, more credibility in the industry. So I was like, huh okay, you know what, I'll just help a little bit with marketing and branding. So I started to just help him build out what Roll Up Life would look like, how to really connect with um, people, because you can't really do anything right now. We can't deliver to anyone, but we can kind of alert people that we're here. Um, you know, we want to be a part of the industry and really just start to tell the story, really just start to um, create, create the story, which is my background in journalism. So, you know, website revampment, social media, you know, building up that following, um, being able to connect with some PR people was where I started to lend. And the more I started to do it, the more research intensive it became for me. So now I'm just researching everything cannabis industry, not just marketing. I'm researching, you know, what's going on in California? What's going on in Colorado? What are the economics behind it? What are the social justice advocates saying about it? What, what is social equity? I had no idea that there was even this disparaging wealth gap within the cannabis industry from um, people, for people of color. And the more I got entrenched and the more me and Tanyan just began to work together, he was just like, you know, at this point, you're like the chief operations officer. I was like, yeah, I kind of know. <laughs> so we made things official around like the um, mid-2019, a little bit earlier. And at that point, it just really started to sink in that this is what we're doing is huge, building this delivery and transportation company that provides not just um discretion but convenience and that's also going to be able to help the um the new jersey area roll up life like it was for him it was now that for me it became everything as a, as a business owner it became what i thought about when i woke up when i went to sleep we would call each other in the middle of the night like did you send that to the lawyer like you know just kind of those <laughs> those abrupt moments that made me really say okay i'm definitely making a, a switching career i want to be a full-time um cannabis industry operator I want to really work on this. I want to build. And then when we got to certain hurdles to the point where now we're just getting funding and then on that application route, there's like no turning back. So all of that research and reading and diving in and just kind of like progressively loving the stuff we were building is what really got me um, into the cannabis industry. So I always say at first it was a no. And imagine if I would have stuck to that no. But because I, I always tell Tyon, like people buy into him. They buy into us as people. Like they know what we're trying to do. We just so happen to have a kick-ass business model. <laughs> but people are buying into your vision. Like how you sold it to me. I truly believed everything he said to me those two years ago about how he's gonna be able to operate in New Jersey. Like I truly believed it. The passion it 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 jumped off of him. And now I hope that that same passion is in me and it jumps off of me whenever I talk about roll up life. So that's what we've been doing um ever since, trying to just create that Uber Eats um of the cannabis industry in new jersey and it's come together pretty lovely that's great i love that i mean i love that story and you know there's so much to, to unravel there to, to unpack there and we'll try and get a little bit in there but you know one thing that you touched on there at the end right i think it's the most important thing that people don't really realize right and there, there's a few things i want to touch on a few things but right there at the very end when you're talking about people you know investors are buying into you they care about the team Right. Of course, the numbers need to be there. Of course, the model needs to be there. All that fun stuff. At the end of the day, they're people. You know, at yeah. the end of the day, they're they're also you know moved by emotion. They're also moved you know by by great speakers. You know, charisma and 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 the, the right pieces together. Right. And they yeah. can see that because the investors, you know, they're seeing this stuff day in day out. Everybody thinks that you know, for better or for worse, like they're unique and their story is the greatest. And you know, mm -hmm. everybody thinks that they have the billion dollar idea. And, you know, this is the next big thing. And that's good. Like, I think, you know, everybody should do that and everybody should pursue it. Right. But it's always at the end of the day about execution. You yeah. know, it's like if somebody would have come up with the idea of 
YouTube in 2005, you know, or 2003, would they have been able to execute as good as the guys who came up with YouTube and ended up doing it? You know, it's just like about execution. You can have the same idea. It doesn't, you know, but then at the end of the day, it's about the people who make it up, right? Yeah. The people who are there. So the fact that you guys have this, this team, this, uh, you know, this bond, and like you were saying, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, checking, making sure that's, that's <laughs> real passion. I mean, that's like, yeah. that's what we're, that's what we all do. Right. I mean, no one wants to work per se. We're all working, but it's something that is it's passionate about it. it it's what else would I want to be doing right now? Exactly. You know, what I want to watch Netflix, you know, what, what else would I be doing? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. you know, it's like, this is, this is what, this is what drives me, you know? Exactly. So, um, no, you're it. absolutely right. That was one thing that, you know, I bought into Tanya those years ago and, and now here we are, you know, really ready to do what we got to do here in New Jersey. No, definitely. That's amazing. Another thing that you're talking about, right. Was what, what you brought to the table, right. You know, he brought the vision, he brought the, 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 all the things that he wanted to do and he knew what he wanted to do, but he brought you on, right, to be COO, to be the operations there and to mm -hmm. really, like you were saying, right, to bring your expertise that you have with journalism and creating a story, right, mm -hmm. and marketing. I think we have, people have this idea that if they build it, if we build it, they will come. And it's just like, no, if you market it, they will come, right? Like, it's like, you're still at this place where, you haven't even made one delivery yet, right? But you've already built like a, uh, you know, a following. Man, yeah, a following, yeah. A following on Instagram, right? People already know who you are. There's already buzz surrounding. People are excited for this to go down. You know, mm -hmm. I think that that's something that people miss. People think like, okay, well, first we're going to do this. And, and a lot of times it has to do with resources, you know. I, trust me, everybody wants to be able to do everything, you know. And sometimes you have limited resources. You have to allocate and put, the, put your pieces in the right places and everything like that. But I mean, when I hear people that, you know, they talk about, well, I don't have a marketing budget. It's like, yeah. how do you, how are you supposed to succeed? You haven't put anything toward, there's, listen, there's low hanging fruit. There's higher hanging fruit. There's, to say, I don't have a marketing budget means just, you're just not trying. Like there's different yeah. things you can be doing, you know, like you got to get your ass to the pavement. You got to like start doing something to get some buzz surrounding you. You know, yeah, so. and it's not it's not easy. You know, a lot with especially with cannabis, a lot of it has to be organic. There's yeah. no you know, buying Facebook ads. There's no, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. it, it's it's a very highly restricted and regulated um, industry in terms of marketing. Yeah. So you have to be strategic. You have to figure out well, how can I capture some audience, and I can't sell them anything directly. I can't do this or do that. Like, what are what are the nuances? And when I first came into the industry and I was building like our story, I definitely was on those, oh my God, I need, like you said, a marketing budget. I need to figure out how to hire an agency who's going to make like social media posts for me. Uh -huh. And I will like scan different social medias and try to mimic them. But then that's when I realized something like we, that's not who we are. I realized like we've seen a huge surge in our following when we begin to truly be our authentic selves. Yeah. So there's always this sort of stigma within the black community already about marijuana. So, you know, um, as a lot of, you know, minority entrepreneurs, you'll understand that sometimes there's this kind of like fine line you're balancing between, you know, marketing to, um, you know, your, your, your demographic and then marketing to another demographic that, you know, also consumes marijuana. You know, how do you kind of collect everybody and then still be yourself? Um, and that was the question we had to ask ourselves, and we knew no other agency would be able to do that but us. So the things you see us post, how we strategically built out our website was to reflect us. Like I now, like when I post, I'm literally posting something that's like super authentic to who we are, like a, a spot where we, we used to grow up as kids and sit outside and, and, and be at, that's one of the places where we hang out. Like we'll post a picture from there. Like, you know, just really connect with people and say, look, we're just like you. You can enter this industry too, but here's how we're doing it, and here's how we're building. Join us on this journey. Like we don't have anything strategic, crazy to sell you. We're just here to make life super convenient for you with delivery, and then be ourselves. Like we're 26 year old kids from this from this area that we've seen a lot of things growing up. We feel we both made it out. We both went to chase different careers, but now we're back looking to give back, and that's the story we want to push. And once we started to really do that and hone in on that, we realized that organic market is just there we get dms like can you deliver we're like no we will get locked up <laughs> if we deliver right now but we know that they're there they're waiting they're excited to really see us take off and we just have that support and we just continue to to build that that community um you know and really be inclusive so everyone who wants to learn about the industry you can learn from us we're still a startup 
you know, we're at the beginning. This is a perfect place to really take some of the steps we're taking and we're happy to share that. No, that's, that's great. You know, I think like you were saying, authenticity, you know, mm-hmm. um, organic because, you know, in the industry, you know, we're faced with a bunch of, uh, you can't bullshit a bullshitter, right? We all have our bullshit no. meters <laughs> on, you like, know, ding, 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 everybody, ding, 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 ding. yeah, like you, everybody can smell it from a mile away. You know what I mean? When you just like right. see something like that is like, you know, inauthentic, you know, and, uh, it just turns people off, you know, yeah. what I mean? it's just better to, to do it the right way and everything. Um, but I think, you know, what you guys would bring a little bit too, right. I think, uh, you know, coming from different points of view, Right, I think there's this kind of, uh, you know, I grew up, it's no secret, right, being, uh, you know, quote unquote stoner, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, my entry into the to the industry was, you know, selling weed when I was 15, 16 years old and all that fun stuff. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's like this mixture between that stoner culture and that business culture. Yeah. You know, that I think that hitting that sweet spot, you know, mm-hmm. that's where you have to get, where you're authentic on both sides. You know, where you can talk to people on the street or people can see, oh, shit, dude, look at Precious. Look at what they're doing. Like, this is awesome. I'm a part of it. But then being able to go into those meetings and go into those investor meetings and go and be able to pitch and being authentic there. And then they're like, dude, these guys are on the ball. Like, these dudes know exactly what's going on right now. You know, and that's what really, you know, separates, I think, a lot. You know, I always wonder, you know, what's better, you know, bring a person, you know, business person in, quote unquote, who has no idea about the cannabis industry right? Or somebody who knows about the cannabis industry and been here for 20, 30 years and growers and all this fun stuff, but they really don't know how to run a legitimate business, you Mm -hmm. know? And it's just like, they're always, and it's, it always goes back to once again, that team and being able to have that balance, you know, maybe one person, uh, you know, maybe one person's lacking and something, the other person can bring something else, you know? So um, I guess, how do you simulate, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you simulate this, this whole, uh, you know, it's still something like we've been talking about brand new, the industry's brand new in general, legalization's mm-hmm. brand new, and being the Uber Eats, right? So you have this idea, this vision, the Uber Eats of Bud, you know, cannabis. And how do you really simulate that, you know, yeah. um, in terms of uh, bringing that vision to life and kind of being able to predict how it's going to be? Kind of like, you know, can you talk yeah. about that? Three, two, one, two, ignition. We at Calican are passionate about cannabis and CBD marketing, branding, SEO content, and web design. If you are a cannabis owner and you know you need an uptick in business or an upgrade in the way your customers perceive you, come check us out at Calican.com and schedule a time to speak with us today. For sure. Like I said, we've been doing a lot of this for the last three, four years. And um, again, a lot of what we're doing has been done already in uh, California. You guys have yeah, a ton of no. delivery services. Yeah. But California is huge. I don't know of a company that delivers all of California, you know, because it's, it's major if, if it's not on the bigger distribution B2B side. Um, you know, there, we've seen it done in, in other states and we're like, okay, what are they doing that we can make better and yeah. that we can that are service New Jersey because we know this area, specifically North Jersey, um, South Jersey too. We know it very well. We know that there's a need. So one thing I always tell about people coming into the cannabis industry, you have to understand where the need is in your state first. So we know our need was that legalization is definitely on a cusp. Before legalization even took place, there are a lot of municipalities who really wanted to opt out from having any kind of brick and mortar marijuana company in their city. So you have ordinances being drafted by local mayors, local council people. And at this point, I think this is about 80 different cities who are barring um, marijuana companies from being in their municipality. So we looked at that and we said, okay, that'd be inconvenient. Even on the medical front, in terms of our medical program, there are only 11 operating dispensaries right now, over 180,000 medical marijuana patients in New Jersey. That number is just, ridiculous you know during covid the governor had to write an executive order that called for home delivery at this point where dispensaries can find a way to deliver to their patients you know of course because of covid and no one could come outside but dispensaries are still essential businesses and now they're being backed up lines around the corner people can't get their medicine because there isn't a delivery infrastructure there 
So another red flag that really kind of showed us, okay, there's a, a specific need for some kind of transportation and delivery entity in New Jersey to really make this, um, this system work, to really make our market work. You feel me? At this point, for a lot of, a lot of our, our um, people who consume, so consume marijuana, your nearest cannabis dispensary might be 50 minutes away. You know, your nearest dispensary might be an hour, 30 minutes away. How are you going to, you know, you're going to drive up there all the time? So we said, that's where we know we can come in and help. That's where we know that we can provide that convenience, that discretion, and really not even just help um, consumers, but help dispensers. And really so that the system doesn't overexhaust itself because there aren't enough dispensaries right now. You know, those have to go up with legalization. More dispensaries have to pop up online to really start to level out that um, demand and supply that I spoke about. But delivery, we, are, we realize it's going to be that infrastructure that really supports the state as it continues to expand. So now if you order through Roll Up Life, you'll be able to have a delivery done to you in, a, in about 30 to 40 minutes, probably less, depending on your area. You know, we'll be able to service all of North and South Jersey and Central Jersey because New Jersey driving is about two and a half hours. Oh. We can drive the whole state. So we realize what makes us different is that we can service the whole state in a sense. You know, we can, we'll start small, of course, but as we build out, we can build to where we're delivering throughout the entire state and providing people that convenience that they're missing out on right now especially on the medical program. So that was really what us, made us target the delivery and transportation space because we knew it to be um, an area that lacked in New Jersey. So we really started to build that. And then on top of that, we said, well, we want to cultivate as well. Before New Jersey's new laws are going to go in, it used to be a vertically integrated state. So, but we still had that mindset where we know cultivated is also a lot of major players in the industry. So we want to build our own cultivation site, which will also be our warehouse site for our fleet and our transportation. So we'll be able to service. So really be able to develop our own strain, um, have those in different dispensaries as well is another thing that we wanted to do on top of that delivery and transportation. So then as our wheels are starting to turn, we also added in our business model, well, we can service B2B as well. We can do B2C pretty good. And we've been testing out that model with a CBD brand, um, a CBD dispensary we partnered with called Best Buds. And shout out to them, they're great. They have a whole bunch of great products on our site right now. Um, so we partnered with Best Buds just to start to show that we have the, the wherewithal to fulfill delivery. So it was almost like the beta side yeah. is going on. So we can ship and deliver CBD, but we practice delivering anytime we get an order so we can kind of time how fast we get places, you know, start to create those nuances in our business model to really strengthen us for when we definitely head towards recreational. So right now you can get CBD shipped and delivered to you through All Up Life. So that was a really good way to know that that B2C portion will get it locked down. Um, so B2B, how can we also help? We realized that dispensers were having a really hard time getting um, products from manufacturers and cultivators. Again, Jersey being so small, we figured we'd be able to also help with that seed to sell cycle. So get products from cultivators, manufacturers to dispensaries, and then from dispensaries to consumers. So Roll Up Life really being that company that fulfills a seed to sell cycle in its entirety throughout New Jersey. And then taking our model and going um, to other states and really just starting to empower more people to look at the ancillary um, sides and the logistics of the cannabis industry, because it's where we are hoping to really get a lot of our success from as we grow. So that's how the whole nuance of delivery and transportation came to play, because it makes sense. Not even just sense like S-E-N-S-E, -S -S but C-E-N-T-S. <laughs> exactly. It makes sense both ways for a roll up life. And we knew no one here in New Jersey is doing it yet. Granted, like I said, the sharks are in the water. We know some people in the delivery space are starting to come over to New Jersey and figure out how, can they, how they can do it. But as you mentioned before, we started to build that market now for a long time. We started to build that base, that following, where I'm confident when first day of recreational, people go like, well, where can I order from? Roll up life. That'll be like the first thing that comes to mind. So that's been really exciting. Amazing, amazing. And yeah, we talk about the deep dive and taking a deep dive, you know, so I appreciate all that, you know, and I have more questions, right? Because I never try and pretend like I know everything about the industry, you know, yeah. that's why I bring experts on what they're doing. <laughs> and I get to learn selfishly, right? So I never even yeah. try and pretend like I know everything. I know a lot about it, a little bit and I know my, my niche and all that fun stuff. A little bit of everything. Delivery, you talk about mm -hmm. obviously, right, delivery in California and everything. And, you know, for instance, if I'm going to order I'm going to order from like the syndicate and they're going to have like their own delivery people who are like coming to me. Right. Or I'm going to mm -hmm. order from WBPG and they're going to have their own delivery people that's coming to me. When I hear like some like Uber eats, right. You're talking about like B2B, right. So is that something that you guys can fulfill is deliveries for other dispensaries. Right. And you know, you talk about, you know, licensing, right. So you talk about yeah. having 
having these warehouses, does each warehouse need their own license or is it just one big dispensary across the whole state, right? Because I know if you have different locations, at least in California, you need different licenses for each, for each location, right? So, I mean, how yeah. does that really work in, uh, in New Jersey and then how, how does that and, play out? Yeah, so for us, in a sense, uh, we would be where we would have our own employees. Um, so the only thing that would differ from our model, like Uber, wouldn't just be um, someone driving their car. You would have to drive a car that we assigned, only because we did some research and for insurance. Is Uber already, is, that's over with Uber. They, in California, that they, they, yeah. they stopped that they game just, already. You know? They just like, get caught right, right, so right. much in the insurance game and accidents. And one of our really good advisors was like, man, to get over that headache, just have your own fleet. New Jersey is small enough for us to service and start out with our own fleet. Therefore, we can take care of everything in-house. So that really was just like light bulb. That'll really separate us because now we'll be able to avoid a lot of those problems. But in a sense, um, you talk about, so that's the one beauty about New Jersey. We don't need separate licenses for different locations. Mm. So there, the licenses have been broken up into six different classes in New Jersey. A class six license is a delivery license that allows us to go from B to C. So if we set up a warehouse to shut up a shot somewhere where our fleet is, we can literally, with that license, again, more provisions are being implemented right now by the regulatory commission. That's still being formed. But as you know, what delivery would kind of, what we hope what it would look like is with that one license, we'll be able to go to partner with the dispensaries that we partner with, let them know, hey, we're here, we can pick up and deliver for you, establish those relationships, and then we'll be there, one of their, or hopefully their sole delivery service um, or one of their delivery services for that like um, dispensary. So almost like an Amazon as well, where like we're put in different dispensaries, they'll have their own store set up on their, on our site or on our app. So if you're looking to get something from a specific dispensary, you can do that. Again, all geo-targeted. So you'll pay more if you wanna like have something that's 25 plus miles away from you, but you can literally shop from any store or any strain and have it delivered to you based on you know how far you are or whatever the case is. You can be in South Jersey and your favorite dispensary is in North Jersey. That's where we would be able to come in and you know you'll just pay that delivery fee. So we operate like that in terms of really being that middleman. So with the class six license, we're able to do that. Now in order to do B2B, there's different licenses for that. You can use a class four um, wholesale license, which lets you, of course, the wholesale and then also, you know, be able to, to transport in bulk. And then a class one license is a cultivation license for us to set up shop and be able to cultivate our own things. So we won't need a license for each location. With the one license that we're given based on um, that criteria, we can just operate. And then we'll just see whatever rules and, and um, policies that the CRC implements. Like we need to know how much is too much? How many ounces can a driver have on them at once? Mm -hmm. um, how are we tracking everything? We know we're building tracking me mechanisms within the technology that we're using. But, you know, making sure that, you know, all of those things are ready to be audited if needed. Um, so small nuances like that is what we're really, you know, preparing for. But in terms of the infrastructure and what we understand right now, it can literally operate as plain delivery as a middleman. Wow, amazing. No, and, uh, you know, like you said, it's always changing. And, uh, you know, you mentioned there now, you know, obviously starting off New Jersey, this is where you know and your home and then maybe moving out to other states, right? And um, yeah. And having to navigate through all, through all those places. Now, you know, obviously, you know, all, a lot of challenges, right? I'm sure you guys have faced, you know, talking about lawyers, talking about all kinds of uh, compliance, regulatory stuff, you know, obviously talking about marketing and all this, all, everything goes on. What's been the biggest obstacle that you guys have faced so far getting going and how you've been able to overcome that? Yeah, so um, I would say one of the major obstacles in terms of building out Roll Up Life the point that we've gotten to um <laughs> was it major obstacle i would say it's uh probably reaching that part of when now we've set up everything we've created you know the plan the business how we want to operate we've met the right people you get up to the part of funding which is where you also see a lot of um people of color kind of stray away from because our startup fund um was 7.5 million it's how much we needed. We estimated we would need to build out everything we said. So we've, we've spent a, a bunch of money ourselves, myself and Tayan, like of our own capital. But that was just, you know, to get the ball rolling, to start to get the accountants in place, you know, get our lawyers in place, get the tech stuff in place, get the website um, in place, you know, build different connections. The things you usually do, you know, get other smaller licenses, join organizations that really help, you know, build that, that lobbying and networking that you need. So you get to this point and you're just like, we sat there and was like, huh, 
we need some money. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, we need some money. What do you do? Do you go pitch to a bunch of different people, different competitions, win 100K here, win 15K here? Do you do a, friend, a family and friends round? Do you, you know, have your family contribute what they can and do some kind of interest or equity model based for return? Like, how do you get this, this, this dollar amount that you know you need to go ahead and buy the trucks we need, the security yeah. we need for the trucks, exactly. the kind of ventilation we need just to even have our, our cultivation site together, you uh -huh. know? And that's when we really had to get deep. And, you know, I say myself and Tayan, it's really when our backs are against the wall is when we do really well. So when we had to go through contacts, go through different versions of what funding would look like, pitch, talk to people, get more connected, we're really starting to um, see those leads turn. So now we're happy to say that, you know, we're raising the money that we need. We're close to getting to that number, that 7.5 number, if not more. And now we'll be able to take that capital, start to spend it and build all of those things. Because when for our license application, you know, it's a point system. In order to win um, certain points, we need to show, oh, you want to be a cultivator? Well, we have the space. We have the 20,000 square feet cannabis space. We have um, canopy space. We have the light bulbs. We have the, the HVAC system. We have everything. Oh, you want to deliver? Oh, we have the secure, the, the secure trucks. We have the... Um, secure cars, we have the security systems in place that's going to be able to track every piece of marijuana that goes through us. You know what I mean? Oh. So really starting to spend money. So having a finance team, um, we just brought on the CFO, Kevin Mahunga. He is great. He comes from an NFL background and a Merrill Lynch background and um, really just started to hit the numbers and crunch for us in terms of, okay, of that 7.5, here's what salaries, here's what's this, here's what's that, here's what's insurance, like really get it down to the yeah. decimal. So investors know that what we're spending, how we're spending it quarterly, and so that they they know for sure how their money is being made back from our from our business model. So you know, getting our accounting team on place. So that's just really been the name of the game right now, and just really clearing that that funding hurdle has been um, also kind of fun because now it's like, yeah, we got some money, or we're getting that money that we need to really execute and and go after that license, really strengthening because that's the most important thing too right now. Like we can be doing all of this and you know, God forbid, lose a license, but how? I think with everything that we're doing right now to put us in place, you know, we have two of the top lawyers in New Jersey on our team. Um, things that are really doing, that we're doing to put us in place right now should have us really be a shoe in for the licenses that we're trying to to achieve. So I would say that was, that was one of the biggest hurdles so far. Wow, I love it. I mean, this is all part of the journey, right? I mean, I think this it like, is. I mean, to me, you know, it's the most exciting part, you know? I mean, it's uh, getting now, you know, getting the funding, like you said, having a fleet isn't cheap, you know, and uh, no, you know. the stuff is numbers go over my head. So I'm a journalist person, I'm a writer, you know, I tell a story, Tayan. That's how we kind of mesh because he was a salesperson and a numbers person and like vision person. So we come together, and of course, Roll Up Life was able to seamlessly come together because both our minds, left brain, right brain, kind of connected. Yeah. But yeah, when I was like looking at these numbers. It's like they start off so big, like 7.5 million. Who has that? that i know in my life nobody but as you really get into the cannabis industry you, these numbers start to get smaller you start to see like oh there there this is a, a supposed to be a 30 trillion dollar industry 30 billion dollar industry i believe by um 2025 right it might be billion or trillion someone correct me but i know it's an astronomical shit ton of money so <laughs> these numbers get smaller and smaller when we realize the things we need and like you said investors are there like you said they get ideas all the time they understand you know, the nuances of where they put their money and how to put it mm -hmm. back. So really being able to pitch yourself, your story, your business model, show them. And people in the cannabis industry know, especially for a freshly legalized state, the opportunity here. So things like that really, um, you know, build confidence for us to go out there and really seek the kind of funding we needed. And it'll, it'll put you there. So I tell people all the time, don't let that be the hurdle that stops you. Just because the number seems big, if it gets, it feels smaller when you really get into the industry and you want to start out. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's uh a lot of money going around and you know like i said it's being it's all about execution you know you see yeah. people that have a lot of funding and things are going well they think it is and you know the first thing they get is the the you know the keg in the office you know and the ping pong <laughs> table and the ps5 and all the fun stuff you know what i mean and then people forget that uh you know we're here to work and all that fun stuff you know it's like yeah. you know it's it's so funny you know to see uh you have the runway and that's why it's so important to have uh, those people that are going to keep it tight you know and they're mm -hmm. going to put it in the right places because it uh you know, we've seen it in, in, in other industries. We've seen it in Silicon Valley and we've seen it in, you know, in the cannabis industry, you know, for sure. Yeah. So, 
the money goes like this. It's that's literally crazy. here. Yeah, exactly. Day. People look at 7.5 and it's like, what? And people look at 7.5 like, dude, that's nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, come on. That's it's crazy. like a two-year runway, you know? So it's like, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, so that's been, um, it's been fun though, like I said, just just seeing the whole picture come together. Like you said, is this, is you got to trust the process. Due diligence and trust in the process is really what, you know, you, you'll build that confidence in your business. Yeah. You'll build that confidence knowing that, you know, it's worth 7.5 and more. You know, it's worth what we, we, we valued our business at. And you continue to work to make it value more and more and more. And you you can't miss at that point. You really can't. You won't miss. Love it. Love it. Exactly. You know, enjoying, enjoying the process, building that confidence. And uh, it's, uh, it's all the fun. And that's where all the fun is. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to look and uh, be there already. That's not where the fun is. The fun is mm-hmm. the, whole, the whole journey. Yeah. You know, so uh, to me on the me and you on the journey, you know, it's it's definitely fun. Definitely, I appreciate that. Uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about you know, obviously this uh, big uh, couple months coming up, right, and a big yeah. time for you. So, you know, what can we expect here from Roll Up Live here in the future coming up? What's the media future and what's long? You know, uh, yeah. give me a little bit longer yeah. for that. You, you want to a little bit? You told me a little bit. You know, I mean, we yeah. really impact a lot, but. I guess what's what's uh, what's coming up here for you guys? You want to dream with me a little bit? <laughs> um, no. uh, immediate next steps, you know, like I said, we are laser focused on just watching how the state is starting to build out the policies and build out the Cannabis Regulatory Commission, you know, just really being our, having our, our, our hand on the pulse of that. So we're watching, making sure we're compliant with that as rules come out, we're structuring our business to be able to abide by those rules. You know, again, um, fundraising, getting the capital that we need to even take off and execute licensing, which is super important. So, you know, because once we get that license, that's what really solidifies us. And that's when we get our, you know, our feet wet even more, you know, as licensed. And we'll join that 4.3% of um, licensees who were African-American and add to that number and then start yeah. to give back, let people know that you can do this too. So, you know, and then advocating too, really advocating for things that we see that are not happening in New Jersey, really joining those others who have been advocating already, going so hard in New Jersey and joining them to make sure that, you know, that social equity piece is done right. You know, um, that the money that is, it's, it's generating, it's going to communities such as mine and East Orange and really starting to build out those programs that'll help um, better our communities. So really being um, in touch with that, but you know, long-term, Um, After getting our license, after operating, after building um, a market here in New Jersey, of course, we love to take this show on the road, (laughs) is what we say. We want to, we love New Jersey. We're from here. We want to make sure we master. I say, if you're good at something once, you could do it twice. So I always said that's our love for us to really get a stronghold on New Jersey and delivery, provide opportunities of employment to, you know, throughout New Jersey, you know, provide a fund within our company in which we, we help give back to other um, cannabis enthusiasts and and entrepreneurs. So if you wanna build a business, you wanna build a dispensary, not only can you go to the state or outside other places to go to funding, you can come to us. You know, hope we would have generated enough revenue (laughs) to be able to help a bunch of people. You could come and tap us for funding. You can come and tap us for information. You can come and tap us to be advocates for you. And then, like I said, you know, this tri-state area is gonna be like a domino effect. So we'll watch what happens in New York. We'll watch what happens in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Massachusetts has some stuff going on already on the delivery front, um, Virginia, and really just start to really um, spread ourselves across and be one of the first major multi-state operators in the delivery and transportation space, you know? So that's definitely dreaming big, but to me, it's not even a dream no more. It's actually part of the actual game plan. So those are things we're super excited for looking towards long-term, but short-term is just, you know, following the process, watching it continue to play out as we get our license and really hit the ground running to get to that big dream. Love it. Love it. Excited to see you on the journey and to see it all, uh, you know, unfold, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, you know, you talk about how uh, you uh, listen to the show, fan of the show. Uh, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's dang. dang discussions. <laughs> so, dang uh, discussions. <laughs> probably before, while, we, while we was chatting. What's that? <laughs> That we should have rolled one while we were I trying. know, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, tell me, uh, you know, you probably heard it already on the previous episodes, right? So I'd uh, love to hear how you define success, right? What's your definition of success, whether professionally, personally, spiritually, you know, yes. what's successful like for you? 
my success is when I can look around me and see others around me um, just as successful or climbing their way to that success as well. I won't think I've reached a level of success until I look back and see, okay, my, my neighborhood, my community, those around me, they're also climbing that ladder. They're also getting there, um, being able to really um, lead the way in that front in the cannabis industry and watching them climb as well. To me, that'd be success because it's just, like I said, my community was, was harmed by this drug. Uh -huh. like families were torn apart you know their fathers that are still in prison there yeah. are people whose records need to be expunged and we need to work on that so that they can have a life they can have a role in the in, in the cannabis industry so the work that i do on the business end only has to translate on the social end for me for me to really feel success so that i know that you know we're watching this 4.3 number grow to, to 8 and then to 10 and then to 12 and then to 15 and so much and so forth and not in a 10-year span i'm talking about in the next one or two years and it's because the work that I'm doing is not just me. I've, I've been blessed to come across a bunch of people throughout different states who are working just as hard to really have that equity there for people of color. So that would be what defines success for me is, is after, you know, not even after, but while building Rule of Life, we're able to encourage others to join the cannabis industry in their way, find their path and really help and lead them so that um, there's, some, there's some equality there. There's some justice there. There's some some reparations, so to say, with the with the war on drugs and, and what it did to, to black people. So that's my that's my definition of success. Love it. You know, I think you're living proof of, you know, reparations, you know, to come in here and um, you know, business owner and this is like this this is win, you know, this is like real winning, you know what I mean? And in, in my opinion in that in that way and um, you know, talking about community, talking about um, seeing others. I was so surprised to hear that you guys are 26, right? I'm like, holy shit. You guys, yeah. are, you guys are so mature, you know, you guys got it on the ball, you know, so I love to see that. And I think sometimes, right, we see, you know, we look around, seeing, looking around and making sure that others around me are being successful, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, people are different levels. People grow at different levels. And obviously I, I would say that, uh, you know, I don't know uh, everybody in your community, everything like that, you know, uh, but you guys are, killing it you guys are fucking killing it and i love seeing it i'm loving you know so uh, like i said really excited um to continue to see you guys to grow and to see what you guys have in 2021 coming up so um as we close you know yeah stay tuned it's gonna be so exciting it's yeah I, i'm stoked for sure so as we close you know how can uh, listeners find out more about you find out more about roll up a life connect with you and uh, by the time this comes out, probably being able to buy from you, you know? And then yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, definitely check out our website, www.rolluplife.com. There you'll learn more about us, our, our, co our company culture, who we are, what it is we're trying to do. And you'll see some CBD products up there if you're interested. You can have those delivered to you if you're in New Jersey or shipped to you if you are outside of the state. Follow us on social media. We are a tribe out there. We are family on social media. You can follow us at rolluplife.com at rollup.life on Instagram. I'll say that again. So that's at rollup.life. And we're also on LinkedIn at rollup.life. So definitely follow us on social media. Uh, we have some cool content out there. It's usually me just waking up in the morning, rolling over and getting on Photoshop. But um, <laughs> we always have something for everybody there. We answer a whole bunch of questions. If you DM us, like we're happy to talk. We are on our DMs all day, every day. And if you ever just want to hear from me, I'm super responsive via email. It's just precious at rolluplife.com. So check us out. Sweet. Yeah, we'll have all that linked here as well in the show notes and the descriptions. Precious has been freaking awesome. I love this. Super excited. Thanks for jumping on it. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, yeah. Always uh, grateful to be able to bring you guys value and everything that's going on. So uh, precious, good luck to you in the rest of in 2021 and beyond. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks, thanks, discussion. I loved it. <laughs>